back on the bus to continue on our classical tour. We're on the tour of the Peloponnese in Greece. We visited Olympia, we visited Nauplion, Naupactos, and Delphi. And this is actually the last of our four-day tour, and we'll be heading back to Athens at the end of the day. But along the way, there's one more important site to see that our guide is going to be taking us to and telling us all about the history. It's a Greek Orthodox monastery up in the hills. It's the famous church of Holy Luke, known as Osios Lukas, and it's in a magnificent position deep in the hills of central Greece. Walking around the church is like stepping back into the Middle Ages, for it was constructed in the 11th century. It has some of the most spectacular mosaics to be found any place in Greece today. When you see this big block so of marble incorporated, it means that there was here an ancient sanctuary and they used its material to build. Uh, this is all that decorates the exterior. It's a very modest look outside. Huh? Because in the contrary of the ancient Greek temple, which is extrovert, columns out and sculptures out, the Byzantine church is introvert. Huh? Its face is in. Now the Byzantines saw the Arab writing. Eh? The Arab writing is very decorative. So in a mosque, for instance, they use the Koran lines, eh? the holy scripts, as a decoration. Now the Byzantines could not write that, but they liked it as design, so they imitated it. Before going inside the church, it's worthwhile to have this look at the outside and examine the buildings around and the courtyards and appreciate the style of construction and get a feeling for the overall scale of the building. It's quite something to see how the building is linked together with the other structures and how the dome towers overall, symbolizing heaven itself. This church of Osios Lucas is a typical example of Byzantine architecture between the 9th and 12th century, back in the Middle Ages. The dome typically rises over the center of the church, whose ground plan is built in a cross in a square pattern. Here the monks lived in their cells as members of the rather severe Cistercian order. Inside the church, we can see how the dome rises above. Even though the scale of the church is quite small, the architectural principles make the dome seem quite huge, and the details give you a splendid feeling of space inside the church. There's no central columns. Instead, the dome is held up by four slender columns around the edges. The feeling of space is further accentuated by the golden mosaics that bounce the light around, and the little details of the arches and the columns and the capitals. The dome itself is painted in a fresco. Originally, it was a mosaic, but that became replaced later in the 14th century by a fresco painted right onto the dome itself. However, most of the original mosaics are still intact in this church. The windows show some of the influence of the early Islamic contact. After all, there was a lot of communication between the Greek Orthodox of the Byzantine and the Islamics of the Muslim world, particularly focused around the town of Istanbul. The earliest churches in Istanbul in the 5th century AD became the basis of later mosques, just as this church today shows certain similarities to the mosques of Islam. Although in a mosque you'd never have human figures or other representations, it would be more geometric. Here we have the Byzantine interior decor, mostly from the 11th century. You'll be amazed at the multicolored marble patterns, the interlocking of brick and stone, the incredible pediments and the pilasters and the pillars, all fitting together in one of the masterpieces of Byzantine Christian architecture. The interplay of light and shade produced by this multiplicity of arches and windows and candles gives an air of solemn mystery to the interior. The church is part of a ecclesiastical complex here on the hill. There are several buildings attached to it, including the cells that the monks lived in, and some monks indeed still live here today, although this is much more of a historical monument nowadays 
than an active practicing church. Some services do take place here. The setting is quite magnificent. It stands on the rise of a hill, commanding wonderful views of Helicon and the surrounding country. We're making our way back to Athens, which is just two hours drive from here. But first, it's time to stop for another meal. And while we dine on more of this delicious Greek food, I'd like to summarize for you the trip that you've been watching. This is Hawaii Geographic Society's World Traveler, and we're touring Greece. We go back to Greece every year in the springtime. While we're in Greece, we like to visit the Peloponnese. This is what you've been watching in today's program. It's a four-day bus ride through the Peloponnese Peninsula in which we see a lot of different historic sites. We do a lot of great eating. We do some shopping. And while touring Greece, we like to visit a couple of the islands. We spend two nights in Rhodes and a couple of days in Mykonos, as well as spending some time in Athens to view the Parthenon and the wonderful archaeological museum there. And our local guides fill us in on the history as well as modern social issues. These four days with Poopy have been most delightful, and we've learned a lot about Greek society. And, but for now, we're winding down. We've arrived back in Athens, and we'll be shortly arriving at our hotel and ending the four-day tour of the Peloponnese. As we drive through the city of Athens, you can see it's quite attractive. There's a lot of stores in Athens. There's some beautiful architecture. It's a world-class European capital city. As the center of the nation, it's host to these foreign embassies you see here lined up along Embassy Row. And a nice way to top off an evening is this restaurant with a view of the Parthenon, also operated by Dionysus. This is an elegant place. We had a wonderful meal here. Terrific service, great food, a nice mixture of Greek antipastos and fish or meats. Elegant service. Here's a tip, if you eat about 7 p.m., the restaurant will not be crowded. You'll have great service. 